Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to look at one of the main tools in After Effects, Masks. Masks are definitely one of the main tools that you'll be using in your everyday work in After Effects. And in today's video, we're going to explore how to create a mask, how to use it, and what parameters it has. A basic mask is meant to hide certain elements, to separate some elements from others, and also to create some simple transitions. And to start off, let's create your first mask. Here I have a composition in After Effects. I can just select my here. This will be text. Select the rectangle tool. We can actually choose another one, for example, the ellipse tool. The main rule is that our layer needs to be selected. So our background, for example, or let's say our text. Otherwise, we will be drawing shape instead of a mask. So here we have our layer selected. And you can just start anywhere. Simply click the left mouse button and start drawing our mask. Here's our first mask created. But there's one thing. For example, if we want our mask to be created from the center, we need to hold down the command key or control on Windows. And then our mask will be drawn starting from the position where we began drawing. So for example, if I start drawing from here and hold down control, then my mask will, the center, the mask will be right here. But we see that our mask is in a free form shape, but somewhat resembles an ellipse or a circle. But to make it perfectly even shape, we also need to hold down shift. Then our mask will be drawn from the center and will have a proper even shape. We can also draw masks using the pen tool. Here are a few tools. Pen tool, vertex tool, lid vertex tool, convert and mask feather. We the pen tool. We just select the pen tool and start drawing our mask. We can create open mask and we can create a closed mask. An open mask, as I showed in my previous tutorials, is more for situations where we can select our mask one in our text pass option and our text will follow the path of our mask. But today, we don't need that and we need to close our mask. To continue drawing, I select the last point of our mask and make it closed, then the mask will start. And we'll see that it covers some element. But this mask has just straight regular lines. And there's an option to draw a mask with rounded lines. And we can adjust it. It will be very flexible. For this, we also set one position somewhere. And for the second position, we don't just click, but we click and drag. Then we get these two lines, which we can use to control our mask. And here we can select each position and manually adjust how it will look. This is to have the ability to create a custom mask if we need it to be arbitrary. Also, if we look at our pen tool in the mask options, we can select our add vertex tool and add a few more points to our mask to have greater flexibility. Or also, if we drew too much, we can just select the delete vertex tool and remove the unnecessary points. And also, for example, if we drew our mask using just the pen tool in a straight line without those lines that we can control, we can select the convert vertex tool. And next, to start, let's select the mask path and we can see that each position, each point of our mask is highlighted. And to select, for example, specific ones, we need to just choose our selection tool. You can press B. And in any position, we can see now that our entire mask is selected. And in any position, we just select a point and we can see that only that one is selected. We can select two and we will be able to move them freely. And to use the vertex tool, I often do this. You can select all our positions, choose the convert vertex tool, and we can transform our positions 
back to the shape. They are currently in so. We will either have a mask drawn with straight lines, or in the other case, we will have these lines that allow us to fully control our mask stretching and rotating each position. And also, for example, if we've already drawn our mask and we want quick access to it, we can just select our layer and press the M key and we will quickly see our mask. And we can, for example, select it and select the mask path. And also, it's a very important point. For example, we have a mask and it's kind of bound to our layer. And for example, if we want to move our layer to shift it somewhere, we won't be able to do that because our layer will only show up where our mask is drawn and it will move along with our layer. And if we just want to shift it, we need to select the anchor point tool. After that, we will be able to change the position uh, of our layer inside the mask. It's very convenient and often helps. Let's also take a look at all the other mask parameters. To do this, we will draw a mask for our background, but we will draw it not in the usual way, but in such a way that our mask will be drawn for the entire layer. To do this, we select our background. If you have it, you can take something else, I don't know, put a photo or something, for example, and double click on the ellipse tool, or for example, on it. Well, let's go with the ellipse tool and double click on it with the left mouse button. And we see that a mask will appear. The first thing we can do is invert it. So everything that is either inside the mask or behind it will be visible. The next parameter is the blending modes. Right now we have the blending mode set to add. If we select none, then we don't see our mask. This is often needed if we just want to see our outlines. We don't want the mask to interfere. So we can control, for example, just our outlines. The next blending mode is subtract. So it will cut out the middle while the outside will remain as it was before. Or for subtract, it will look something like this. We can also change or rather transform our mask. And for example, doing it this way is inconvenient and unclear. And if we need to keep the same shape of the mask, we want to reduce it. There's this cool tool for that called transform. To do this, we select all the positions of our mask, press Ctrl or CMDT, and we get this position, this tool for changing, transforming our mask. And we can just hold Shift, change the size. And after that, press Enter, and we can see the main parameters of our mask here by opening it. We see the mask path, which means we can animate our mask. Mask Feather, Mask Opacity, Max Expansion. Mask Feather is basically about blurring the edges. We can slightly blur the edges if we don't want the outlines to be too contrasting. We can also reduce its visibility, meaning the opacity, and we can change its position. So we can slightly increase or decrease it, expand its area, or reduce the area of the mask itself using Mask Expansion. So it keeps the same shape, but it gets smaller or larger. And for the mask path, for example, to animate, we can just click here. This will be our first key. Go to one second. Press Ctrl T to transform our mask. And for example, reduce it completely. Well, it's actually almost completely reduced, like something like that, for example. Or let's do the opposite. We can create some animation like that, for example. And that's basically everything about masks. Try to explore this tool. It's really a cool tool that you definitely need to know. And if you have any more questions about masks, just drop them in the comments and I'll definitely try to help if I can. And today we've covered pretty much everything about masks. You'll definitely be able to get to know, learn and explore this tool in more detail on your own. But that's all from me for today. So thank you for watching and see you next time.